All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's Saturday night and we have Kari Koga Kaseke all the way from Zimbabwe. He's the Chief Executive Zimbabwe Tourism Authority. You're welcome to Saturday night. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you. No, thank you very much. Okay, can you release my hands now? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you? How are you? No, I'm okay. Oh, great. Yes. You came all the way from Zimbabwe, yeah. all the way there from there to Nigeria. Yeah. So can you tell us why you're here? No, we are here on the invitation of the State Minister of Tourism, who is the Commissioner for Tourism. Okay. He has invited us to come and join Nigerians on the Lagos Heritage Week. Okay. So we are very happy to be here. Hmm. We are also we are trying to learn what other people do for their tourism. And I think uh, we are going to learn a lot. So we have accepted the invitation from the Commission of Tourism, which she sent to us. Okay, so can we safely say you came to spy on us a bit? Just to spy on us, to see how we do it, so that you can do it better than us? Or I don't think spying is the right way. We've come to learn, to learn mm. from you, because they've not um, held any of what is happening here. We've not held our carnival. We want to have our own carnival on the 25th of May. This is the first edition in Zimbabwe. So we are learning from other nations and the, the Lagos State uh, government has said we can learn from us and they've invited us to come and learn from them. So there's no spying, it's, 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 it's pure learning from them. Mutual yes. learning. That is, that is true, yeah. Great. Now, um, you came all the way down here to Nigeria. Is this your first time? No, I've been to Nigeria several times. I've been coming here for the past 10 years. Hmm. Uh, Abuja, uh, Cross River State, and uh, uh, Lagos. Yeah, I've been to Nigeria several times. Okay, uh, why has it taken you this long to come up with this initiative? Why are you just waking up to this initiative of you know having like a carnival in your own country? We're sleeping on the steering wheel. Oh, you were sleeping? Yeah. You're lucky you didn't have an accident. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> the driver was sleeping on the steering wheel. I am the driver for tourism in Zimbabwe. I am the chief executive of tourism. Okay. So I blame it all on, on myself because hmm. it has taken me uh, truly, true, like you are saying, it has taken me too long for me to come up with this idea. So at least it's better late than never. We are now having our own carnival this year. You know, I admire your humility. I admire your humility because not too many people would say, come, I have done it wrong and I want to do it right. Not yeah, too many people. Yeah, so yeah, for that, I want to give you a handshake. Oh, thank you. Keep again. it up. I'm learning okay. from you as well. Okay, thank you. You won't be learning from us. We'll be learning from you. And I've learned one thing from you today. When you have, uh, when you're to be blamed, you just take it as uh, your responsibility, right? Yeah, that is great. Cool. Now, um, a lot of people are watching right now and um, they're wondering, Zimbabwe, Yes, we've heard so much about Zimbabwe. Some yeah. have just heard the name Zimbabwe. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit of uh, Zimbabwe? Can you tell us about yeah. the country? Yeah, Zimbabwe, from a tourism point of view, I'll talk about tourism. I can talk of other things, economy and uh, other things later. But tourism, Zimbabwe is a very, very, very uh, competitive tourism destination. It competes with other destinations in the world. It competes with other destinations in Africa. It's competes with other destinations in the region, Southern Africa. Uh, we are very rich uh, in terms of our tourism products. Uh, when we talk of Zimbabwe, every, almost everyone knows about the Victoria Falls, which is a, a world wonder. And, uh, but that's not only what we have in, in Zimbabwe. We, like any other country in, in Southern Africa, most countries, we also have wildlife. Uh, wildlife in Zimbabwe is quite uh, wild. It's not like you have in other countries where I see them turning their wildlife into zoos, like a zoo, where you go and you see animals grouped in a certain area. Our wildlife, you have to search for it, and it's wild. And uh, we're very proud of that uh, uh, pristine uh, nature and wildlife. Apart from that, we pride very much of our rich culture and heritage, which has led us to think we must also do our own carnival. We want to showcase to the world what we have in terms of our culture 
in terms of our heritage, it's our own heritage work, like it's called Lagos, the Lagos Heritage Week. So in Zimbabwe, it's a cultural and heritage week where we are showing us the diverse, diversity of our culture in Zimbabwe. Okay, uh, you talked about the Victoria Waterfall. You also talked about the wildlife. Yeah. Are there other things that um, tourists can look up, uh, look forward to when they come over there? I mean, are those your main still when it comes to tourism uh, attraction? Yeah, when you come to Zimbabwe as a tourist, one thing that you don't come to see, but which is uh, quite uh, important for for people to come to Zimbabwe, we've said Zimbabwe is a world of wonders. We are a world of wonders. That's how we brand ourselves. And we've come up with our own seven wonders, seven wonders of our own world. Like the seven wonders of the world, we've come up with seven wonders of our own world. And of all the wonders, the seven wonders, the number one wonder is uh, the people of Zimbabwe. Mm. They are very, very friendly. They have, their culture is very rich and uh, we take this as our wonder number one. So we, we, we pride of ourselves, we pride of our people. Zimbabwe has gone through a lot of challenges over the past decade or, and a half or so. And uh, from a tourism point of view, one would, des one would expect that uh, by now, Zimbabwe should not have a single visitor given what the negative publicity that has been Hebrew uh, 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 in Zimbabwe, but uh, because of our people who have stood firm and supported us in welcoming our visitors, Zimbabwe is uh, in the region, second from South Africa. Uh, last year we received um, um, 2.4 million visitors, which is quite a, a feat com comparing to other countries that have, gone, that have not gone through the same challenges that we have gone through. So that is our wonder number one, our people. We pride them. Yes, we've got a lot of other, six other wonders, which is Can our heri them? heritage. Okay. Okay. And then uh, we've got uh, also the Great Zimbabwe. The Great Zimbabwe is like um, a monument that was constructed uh, six, seven hundred years back. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a monument of feature where the name drives its name from. Zimbabwe, it comes from that monument, which is Great Zimbabwe. It's a very attractive. I think uh, we should be able to, sh to show you the Great Zimbabwe and you, people come to see it. Uh, it's, it's, it's built of stone mm -hmm. uh, without mortar. So it's, it's quite uh, an, att an attraction in its own right. Then, uh, of course, our wonder number four, is the Victoria Falls, which is, of course, a world wonder. But in Zimbabwe, it's struggling at number four. It's among the seven wonders of the world. Hmm. Then uh, we pride also ourselves, of the, like I told you, of the wildlife, the uh, pristine wildlife. And uh, we also have what we call the biggest or the largest man-made lake you know the largest man-made lake in the world mm. is in zimbabwe mm. it stretches 300 kilometers long and 40 kilometers wide so we we have put that one as our number wonder number six and our wonder number seven is uh, what we call our eastern highlands which is a very very uh, an attractive area it's mountainous uh, some people call it uh, uh, Little England, some people call it uh, uh, by other names, but we call it the Eastern Highlands it's because it is on the, in the east of Zimbabwe and it's a mountainous area and uh, people come basically to spend some, some time there. It's, uh, if you are ill, you can recover if you go to the Eastern Highlands. It's made this now and a lot of other things. So our seven wonders are the ones that I've mentioned. You just mentioned this last seven, uh, the seventh wonder now. Yeah, the Eastern Does Islands. it have some kind of um, spiritual... Um, 
backing or yes. it's just spiritual. a therapeutic yeah spiritual effect. yeah spiritual yes it is and uh, people have gone there missing people people have me people who, who go there and they, they don't behave mm -hmm. they, they go forever you don't see them wow and it's, it's sad but that's the nature of the eastern islands where so you, you must behave, you must go according to the rules of the areas and the, it's mysterious, there's a lot of mysterious things that happen within the Eastern Islands. Hmm. Yeah. I think I want to stay by the gates of that Eastern Island and just say hello, is there, uh, but I don't want to disappear if I come there. No, if you go by the gate and you say hello, yeah. what will you be doing? Just saying hello. No, you disappear. Oh no. Yeah, you disappear. Why? Because you don't have to say hello. So I, once I get to the gate, I must step in, I must get into the place. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And bare. Barefooted? No, you don't have to be barefooted. I mean, is it like people go there normally? There are certain areas where you have to be barefooted, where you don't have to climb the mountains. On, uh, on shoes, yes, you have mm -hmm. to remove your shoes. Certain areas in the Eastern Islands. But the Eastern Islands stretches for almost uh, 200 kilometers, so you, you can't be barefooted there. But there are certain areas where you don't have to put on your shoes. When you are climbing for a specific uh, purpose to see specific things in that area. Okay, um, let me get this um, straight. Do you have like houses there where people go there to stay? Spend a week, spend a month, spend hotels. a year, hotels in that eastern yeah, island? Hotels, very good hotels, five-star mm. hotels. There. Yeah. So but if you want like yeah. a kind of, if you want like um, spiritual rejuvenation, you, you have can to go, go there to, those, to, that, to, that, to those areas. Mm. And that is where you must uh, follow the rules. If you don't follow the rules, you will disappear. And uh, people have disappeared. Are you re really serious about the disappearance? I'm serious, yes. I'm very serious. I'm not joking. Have you tried to demystify why people disappear? Uh, we've, we've, we've brought with us here our Igwe. He's among the, the people here. Okay. He can um, maybe explain. No, um, I, I think I prefer you to do the explanation. Because he, he you cannot, are Libra, you are neutral. I don't want to disappear while I'm talking to him. No, no, no. He can explain better. He can explain better because he is the owner of the culture. Okay, I think I would pause there because yeah. I don't want to disappear while I'm on stage talking no, no. about this. <laughs> you can disappear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. That is so, so, I mean, news to my ears. Yeah. And I'm sure it's news to a lot of people's, um, people who are watching right now. They'll be really, really awed by what you just said. Yeah, it's still happening in Africa. It's still happening in Zimbabwe. Wow. That too, people must follow their... Does it have any, I, I want to believe it has everything to do with African magic. The African magic we talk about. No, not African magic on uh, television. No, not that kind of African magic. I'm talking about real African magic. It's African spirits, eh? Yeah. Yes, it has to do with African, African way of life. Okay, so if you're unclean, the best thing is stay away from the island. If you're unclean, yes. If you're unclean, if don't you, go there. Yeah. But if you feel that you're upright and all, then you can take. That's, a, you that's can true. go in there. That's true. I'm sure a lot of people are watching now. And they were like, oh, "Gosh, I want to go there and see for myself." Yeah. How is the environment like? Security, is that an issue over there? Zimbabwe is the most secure country in, 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 in Africa, if not in the world. There should be no concerns about security. Security mm. is, 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 is never an issue. It has been uh, uh, said in the newspapers, especially from the Western media, that Zimbabwe is not safe to go. But uh, look, we have been reading about tourists being hurt, tourists being killed in other countries. No single tourist has missed one penny, one cent in his wallet in Zimbabwe hmm. during our most challenging period, 2000 to 2010. No single tourist has missed a single cent from his wallet. But in other countries, tourists have been killed. Tourists have been uh, 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 maimed. 
tourists have been hurt. Not, nothing is that, of that nature has happened to a tourist in Zimbabwe. So what do we say about security in Zimbabwe? We are the most secure country in Zimbabwe. Hmm. Yes. That's another plus. Yes. You, have, you seem to have a lot of pluses. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Okay, and the religion. What's the religion like? It's, um, there's freedom of worship in Zimbabwe. We have, uh, okay, largely they are Christians. Uh, there are few Muslims. Now we want to sound you out on what you think of Nigeria and Nigerians. What's your experience been like? Since you've been here, Nigeria is known is known for what we call African movies, African movies, okay, of Africa on African magic, and we, I, 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 I think for us, Nigeria is a market. It's a tourism market. The Nigerians are very, they are very rich people in Nigeria, very good people in Nigeria, who want to travel. But uh, they are traveling to wrong places. Nigeria. By wrong places, you mean? They are going to Europe. You see? They are going to Europe. They are going to the United Kingdom and other European countries. They are going to America. We want them to come to Africa, Southern Africa. We want them to come to Zimbabwe. That's basically what I'm, I'm here for. Nigerians, please, out there, come to Zimbabwe. You will experience far much more than what you're experiencing in Europe. You will not regret after having visited Zimbabwe. And I'm simply saying to Nigerians, come to Zimbabwe and you see what you've never seen before. Zimbabwe is a world of wonders. So we must encourage intra-Africa visitations. We must visit each other. That's why we're here. We were here uh, some few weeks ago, less than two weeks ago, we were here, and I'm, I'm back here. And I want to see this, the, those who are in charge of tourism in Africa must encourage Africans to visit each other. That is the only solution to our tourism. If, we, if every African is thinking of visiting Europe, so who will visit Africa? We are spending our money in Europe, Europe which, which spend our money in developing itself. You know how Europe underdeveloped Africa. And we don't want to continue developing Europe from with our money. We must develop our own selves, we must develop Africa. So Africans must visit Africa. So what about the educational sector in Zimbabwe? How, what, what is there to tell? Yeah, as, as you know, you, you read newspapers, you read everything. Yeah, Zimbabwe is the, in Africa, the highest literacy rate, 94%. Lit uh, literacy rate, and that is not Zimbabwe saying that. That is what the UN is saying on our mm -hmm. literacy rate. Our education system is very sound and is very good, uh, and uh, we are very proud of. Uh, for the past three years, we we have been uh, having the highest literacy rate. So that talks volumes of our education system. And so about the food, so what are the kind of foods you would like to present to us? Like tourists coming over to your country to have a feel of what it is to yeah, live in Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Zimbabwean traditional food is, is always very, has always been very rich in nutrition. It's not just our food, it's only, it's not, but it's, it's, we don't just eat it because it is food. It, it, it has been very rich in, in, in nutrition. And uh, whenever tourists visit us, we encourage them to have our traditional food. What would you like to present to me? What are the names of the food you would present to me to say, come, we know how to cook here in Zimbabwe? I will present maybe to you some uh, vegetables uh, with peanut butter, which is muru uh, unedovi. Mm. And uh, I'll also present to you uh, Madora. What's Madora? What's it made of? Madora uh, is called Mupani Wem. It's a Wem. Worm. Yes. Oh, I saw that thing and. You don't want it? Don't I don't like think it? I want to eat worm. It's very delicious. The fact that it will eat worm. 
It's very delicious. <laughs> you, you, you eat it when you come. Rose, when, when you come to Zimbabwe, you, you're coming to Zimbabwe. When you come to Zimbabwe, we'll take you to the area where this Bopanuem is uh, originated from. That is the Batebetland area. And everybody eats it? Everybody eats it. Is there any kind of nutritional value? Yes, very nutritious. Hmm. Yeah. Warm? Yeah, a worm. You put it in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. And sink it down. Yeah. And then the worms in your body would increase. You know, we already have worms, you know. The body itself, the human body is made of worms. And then you add that one to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, you, you, uh, we'll wait for you to come to this bubble and you see, you witness for yourself the worm. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can eat the worm. I'll have it captured on camera and bring it over here so that people can see me actually eating worm. Is it just... So difficult for you to eat it. Huh? I'm just, I'm just trying to process it. Just process the image of putting worm in my mouth and eating it. It's, ah. it's okay. It will be very adventurous. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of adventurous. It's, it's just like eating any normal food. Well, it's different from chicken. It's different from fish. It's different from shrimp. It's, 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 it's different not. from it's meat, not. beef, and all. It's, it's not. It's not different from fish. Some people in Zimbabwe, most people in Zimbabwe don't eat fish, they prefer the worm. Wow. Mm. Interesting. People, you're listening, he's telling us that when we come to Zimbabwe, if you come in as a tourist, you would um, enjoy eating worm. Yes. I want to find out myself and, and just have a taste of it and see how tasteful it is. He has told me it's nutritional, so I don't have a problem of visiting the toilet immediately after taking the worms, right? Yeah, no, you not no problem with yeah, that. You not so that. you've mentioned the first um, <laughs> delicacy. You mentioned it again. Can you mention that again? Cesare Munga. Cesare Munga. Cesare Gio. Cesare Gio. Regio. Regio. Yes. And. Nemuru Onodoi. Nemuru. Man, my tongue is twisting here. <laughs> 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 we like you to change to those names. So okay, the, the first two, what is it made of? It's um, it's a grain. The grain, we, yeah, okay. which we grow. Okay. And then uh, we then uh, uh, use it for making salsa when the grain has been uh, harvested. It's, okay. It's, yeah, even the the second one, Zio, is also a grain. Okay. This is small grains. Okay. Uh, very small in size. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are also used to make uh, salsa and a lot of other things. You can okay, also yeah. use the, uh, you can also use these grains to brew beer. Oh, beer. Yes. And so, what about it's your sauce? You want to brew beer for spirits. Okay. To uh, to arouse your spirits. Uh huh. You use that type of grain. Okay, and yeah. it's, children can eat it as well. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. don't get high. No, no, no. Anyone mm. can eat it. Yes. Interesting. So your sauce? Do you just eat it like that, or you eat it with something? No, you eat it with, uh, like I said, that with uh, uh, vegetables, either mm. with meat, but it's, it's, it's best when you eat it with uh, uh, roasted meat with uh, peanut butter. Okay. Yeah. Great. You know, I, I, I would love to spend more time with you, but I bet you'll be back here again. Yeah. This is just part one of this discussion. We're going to have another part thank you of very this much. discussion. No, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure having you on Saturday night. And you're here for the Lagos Black Heritage Festival, right? Yeah, we are here. So yes. we're wishing you the best. Thank you very even much. Even as you spy on us and learn from us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you on Saturday oh, night. You. Thank you. Yeah, so um, if you're just joining us, well, you've missed out. Uh, we've had um, the CEO of Zimbabwe tourism authority with us he's been telling us about all the good things he would enjoy when you come over to zimbabwe as a tourist as a visitor um on that note we say thank you so much for joining us on saturday night until next week when we come up with another interesting guest it's been saturday night 